Oh, yeah. Good morning, folks. I'm just sharing my screen. I'm just gonna um gonna basically talk about this shortly, but um let's get to this here. Okay. Um, so good morning and welcome to the call. So uh, what we're going to do today is essentially kind of talk about one of the new features that we're developing. And what I'm hoping to do with this is essentially get some feedback before we release this out there to essentially kind of uh, see, because um, when we did basically an internal, um, like when we talked about what are the things that we need to do immediately in terms of from a product perspective, one of the things that we noticed from a lot of feedback from all of you people was essentially one was the EPS scoring, which we released uh, two to three weeks back. And basically that has become part of the system. Uh, the second thing essentially that everybody talked about and basically seems to be something that is a trend in the industry that we are missing is essentially what people are talking about in terms of attack surface management, in terms of what is my attack surface and what are the things that I need to fix in my attack surface. So in order to essentially kind of take care of this, we essentially kind of started off with a certain set of um, uh, putting together uh, some code and basically some uh, things together. And we have it in basically a certain shape where basically we have uh, certain things which are mapped out. And I'll also talk about what are the other things that we are mapping out as we go forward. And what I really would like is basically for this team to tell me back saying that whether we are in the right direction, anything that we're missing, uh, is this useful, not useful, et cetera, because this was more of an industry trend that we essentially noticed. And it was also basically something that uh, a lot of you basically actually asked us about whether we had this in the product. So behind this, we do this. So um, essentially, if you really look at it, when you talk about what is attack surface, right? So there are basically uh, three sets of things that we talk about. What are the channels by which uh, one is basically what are the methods that can be used in order to basically kind of uh, attack a particular system. The second is what are the channels which are open where basically people have access to uh, utilize the methods that are put in place. Okay, when you're looking at a particular surface of the system. The third is what are 
once you basically are able to establish a channel or a connectivity, what are the attacks that you can essentially kind of perpetrate through this entire system? And once you essentially have an attack, how what is the kind of data that you can extract from this system? So there are essentially these four steps that essentially um, when anybody talks about an attack surface, these are the four steps that people talk about. One is basically what the what is the methodology uh, that is used for uh, putting things together? What are the channels available to basically through which essentially somebody can access uh, the uh, the system that is behind the attack surface? What are the attacks that can be launched once I establish the channel? And basically, what is the data that can be exfiltrated? So this, um, if you really look at it, it's nothing but a set of entry and exit points. And the attack surface of a system is nothing but a way in which a threat actor can essentially kind of enter the system and cause damage. So uh, it consists of quite a few pieces, which essentially I don't think like an automated tool we can essentially do. But there are a lot of pieces essentially that is also required from, say, a customer angle or this angle, which is, for example, where is your data? Where are the relevant resources? And basically identifying what is the contribution of each of those resources to the uh, entire attack surface. That's essentially what we have to look at. Now, as I said, basically, uh, if you really look at the attack surface um, measurement, basically from some of the metrics that have been defined from um, some of the universities in the US and Europe, they talk about each of these methods, which is method, channel, and data item. Uh, what is the damage potential method basically um, allows you to essentially get a certain privilege. And then essentially, you, if you apply the effort, you can essentially get access rights into a system. Uh, the channel again is a protocol by which you establish a connect connection, and then you essentially gain access rights. And then data items again, you basically use the access rights in order to essentially access the particular data. So what is the the entire thing is about? How can you the summation of all the methods, um, all the channels, and all the data items? When you basically combine these three together, and basically it's a multiplying factor because once you've uh, once you get access to one, then basically uh, and you get access to the second thing, it, it's a multiplicative factor. So how many resources you can get access to just multiplies. So if you basically uh, look at what they define this as, it's a formal framework to identify a set of entry points and exit points, and basically a set of untrusted data items that I, essentially I can retrieve. So uh, overall, this is supposed to estimate what is the resource contribution to the attack surface as a damage potential effort ratio. That is, is what the whole thing is all about. So if you really look at it, like entry points and exit points, basically, if I have a root privilege with a uh, with somebody uh, in a on a particular machine, which can be accessed in an unauthenticated fashion, then as a, essentially the uh, a kind of uh, uh, risk that I put myself is almost like twenty eight points, and then the extended risk, basically because of lateral movement, is essentially seventeen points, and basically, uh, so these are metrics essentially that are available and basically are standard. So these are what they uh, measure from an entry and exit point perspective. And then we look at channels and data items, which is essentially, again, what is TCP, SSL, or a unique socket. All of these are essentially channels by which you can get access to uh, different systems. And then you can essentially have these. And then so with each of these, you essentially have kind of numeric values that you assign to them. And then you come up with what they call as like, for example, this is essentially for something with FTP, what will be the values? This essentially kind of demonstrates that. And so you assign numeric values to these pieces, right? So what we uh, have done is basically kind of created a complete report that I believe that will more help uh, uh, our users to basically understand. So I'll just make this off screen and I will essentially kind of get into this uh, So if you look at this, this is basically um, one of the sites that we essentially scanned today. Uh, it's called the RGS Law Group. This is basically a valid site. And these are findings that we essentially found on that site. It is just for demonstration purpose. So please don't, we, we don't run it on arbitrary sites, but we just kind of uh, pick this up from a couple of uh, uh, locations and do this. So what did we find? So all we did was we essentially entered that this is the site that I want to scan. now. 
how do we essentially do this scan? Uh, we essentially look at it from uh, the perspective of somebody as part of the red team. So the part of the red team is basically that somebody who's going to basically attack a particular server does not have any information, right? Now, what are all the pieces of information that he will be able to kind of retrieve without too much of, uh, like he uh, does not put in, put in a lot of effort, but what is the kind of information he can retrieve? So if you really look at it, he can get all the open ports basically, which is there. So these are 23 open ports. Then he's basically got this, this thing and then he can see that he can get to four target IPs, which are basically there. So essentially, if you really look at it, somebody who's doing reconnaissance or basically somebody who's part of the red team would essentially kind of pick up these target IPs and then start scanning those target IPs for open ports. Third is basically what are the emails that he is able to draw from these systems and basically which are there in the wild. Any usernames that he can essentially pull out, which he can potentially use to access any systems once the channel. So once he's established the channel and inside, how can he basically do this? And again, basically something that's overlooked a lot of times is basically all the subdomains. So what are the subdomains that are there? And basically what are the uh, items that are essentially over there? So if you really look at it here, for example, we basically have a target IP address. Now this target IP address, which is out here, uh, basically we, its location is in the US. And you have 15 protocol, 15 ports which are opened. Now we're not sure what are we basically have found out services for all these ports, and basically said, okay, you have insecure ports in here. You have a C panel that is exposed to the internet. You have basically a WordPress uh, uh, WordPress manager which is exposed to the internet in the these ports are two eight zero eight six and two zero eight seven. And once we essentially kind of figure out this, we are able to figure out like these are all the vulnerabilities that are essentially there. So we have all these vulnerabilities which are basically there in this particular system. Okay. And then we basically run a whole bunch of detection algorithms. So for example, here we have Apache detection. So basically we have, we can find the version on it. So if you have the version and then we also basically found the SS open SSL version. So these are all things that you would have co commonly seen with all of your callers, this thing. Then I'm able to detect what are the SSL DNS names. I'm able to detect who are the SSL issuers. Then um, uh, like, for example, all the technology detection that we are able to do. Then what is the uh, CMS detection? Now, what is the website builder detection? So basically you can see it's WordPress plugins. And then um, we basically are able to figure out that we these have weak ciphers, okay? And then you basically can see that we have a robots.txt endpoint prober. We can look at the CNAME fingerprint. So these are all DNS uh, 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 queries that we are running on top of it. So pages with older copyright date, HTTP headers, which are missing. So all of these are essentially kind of items that contribute to your basically overall footprint in, uh, in terms of what uh, people see. So for example, uh, your DNS DMARC detection, I'm able to see your WordPress in there. What is your MX record? All of those details, essentially, we have been able to kind of uh, pull together. And then you essentially see, again, these are the other IPs and basically their uh, ports which are open. Then we have the complete DNS records. Now, DNS records, basically figuring out DNS records and then kind of probing multiple DNS uh, uh, records is basically one of the things that people talk about. Uh, like people can essentially use this to figure out what are the other domains and try to attack those domains. That's essentially what people can do. So these are all the DNS records. Next, uh, we essentially look at basically your DMARC status, your uh, this thing, all of that stuff. So if you look at it, your SPF is enabled over here, but essentially when you look at the DMARC record, it says the primary domain accepts spoofed emails, but they will be marked as suspicious. So essentially these are uh, like, what is it that will happen with that particular DMARC setting. So it checks all of those pieces. Third, these are the emails that we've been able to detect without that are basically out there. What are the usernames out there? Then of course, all the subdomains that we found. So auto discover, mail, CP calendar, CP contact. So these are all essentially some of the control panel, this thing. And then there is something called web disk and web mail. So um, kind of giving you a complete overview of the entire uh, attack surface and what essentially can be, uh, what are all the things that are open to attack on this particular piece? So the next thing that we are essentially doing is basically doing that numeric computation that I showed you to basically come up with basically a, a score, which will essentially show up here. And then based on that score, grading this particular asset, this particular uh, domain 
uh, basically on a scale from A to F. Now, again, we didn't put this in because we wanted to keep this open for discussions, whether it should be an A to F rating or a 1 to 100 rating. So that's something that we basically want you folks to kind of chime in. And this essentially will be the new, uh, what we call as the attack surface, basically mapper, which you can use with a, with a very simple piece, which is we're going to keep this outside and white labeled also, so that you can essentially run this as an assessment on any website, any potential customer that you're going to visit where you don't have any information about the customer, but you can essentially kind of create this report and hand it off to them. And um, of course, once it comes into our tool, we'll essentially give you all the dashboards and all the trending graphs and basically tell you like what was your attack surface a month back versus what it is now and give you all the reports that are required for the same. So that essentially is uh, what we're doing from an attack surface uh, mapper perspective. So I'll just quickly check if there are any uh, there are a few charts. Yeah. Adam, uh, so uh, Matt, how are usernames and uh, emails pulled from the target in uh, case of the uh, attack surface mapper? Um, actually, there are multiple uh, mechanisms. One is essentially uh, from some of the contact information. And then uh, basically you have uh, contact in the uh, DNS. Second is by, like when we essentially query the CNAME records, we can essentially figure out like uh, there are different email validation services that we can essentially query, which essentially will give us a list of emails that belong to a particular domain. So which means that your name is in the wild. Third is essentially uh, we are basically probing the dark web to figure out if any of the emails from this domain are basically visible in the dark web. So that is essentially another place where we are doing it. Um, Adam will associate it third party domains we found. We essentially right now uh, uh, do only the subdomain mapping. We do not essentially like associate a third party domains. I'm assuming that these are uh, uh, third party domains that are um, um, like basically related to something, but it is not uh, it it is not basically a direct subdomain, but could be related to this particular domain. So um, we can basically look at it because it's basically a subdomain mapper. We can essentially work on that particular piece. So that's uh, 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 that part. Um, what OSN tools are used to collect this data? This is interesting, but it's going to distract from the core functionality of the product. Um, it's actually not uh, any tools that we're using, uh, Dennis. But this is basically like we've written our own piece of code to basically pull the data from this because um, unfortunately what was happening is that everybody kept saying that uh, we don't know what is the attack surface, so we don't know what we have to basically fix right now, right? So that's the reason we essentially developed this. And we are not basically going to remove anything from the core development. Core development continues to this thing. So. Um, how invasive are the scans? Is it pure OSINT or the invasive scans that we're likely to get need permission to scan for legal compliance? Um, it is basically OSINT compliant and we basically pull all the information that's available publicly. Um, we also have the ability to integrate with other sources such as uh, Shodan, Census and all of these pieces and basically pull information from them. So these are essentially how uh, we essentially get all of this information. But the fundamental thing is that it basically gives you a very good and uh, precise way to see essentially what is exposed to the world and how things are working for you. Um, and uh, second is that the only thing that essentially the team is adding right now on top of this is basically some of the checks on, especially on email security. And third is basically a firewall checking rule, which basically says that if you have an agent which is installed inside the network, we will essentially kind of um, uh, and you basically have the firewall uh, uh, basically scan enabled, then we will essentially figure out whether any the, the anything which is basically, if you set up a policy that um, all of those policies are essentially kind of uh, being enforced, which means that if any port or any data which is going out of any port that is not supposed to be going, uh, is going out, then essentially we will essentially flag it over here. So that's basically kind of, a, a data test that we do between the probe and this uh, agent on the cloud. So it will tell us basically what ports are open and what ports are closed. So that's essentially one of these scans that we are going to be doing.
so simon uh, on the uh, ui reports etc we are um, working on it we have uh, sent basically three versions of the ui back and forth for review but essentially we are waiting for the final versions uh, basically since this is a version that's going to be there for a long time we essentially want to make sure that we release it properly and as i told you the other part is that this is basically kind of a dual pronged approach where you will essentially have the old and the new system working so one of the things that we are essentially doing is to basically make sure that the agent upgrades and basically sends data to both the systems without basically kind of causing any impact on the um, machines that are out there so essentially there is a routing of data which basically we are working on so once that is resolved you will essentially be able to do this may i request a dashboard to compare clients attack surface scores um so yes douglas we will essentially provide a global dashboard where you can see the attack surface scores by client and basically compare them and the, if you want historical bio for a single client that also will be available so matt yes that's the right thing so it would uh, 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 that would basically be the case um in terms of basically uh, if you if you basically give the domain name then it would essentially be on that domain but if you're basically hosting multiple hosts on that ip we would find those but you can choose to ignore those uh, we we can basically say that if it does not belong to this subdomain we will basically ignore it so that's not a problem adam how much of a price increase will this feature add to this thing so the this is basically part of the core product so we are not basically planning to add any pricing on part of this so this will be part of the core product itself okay then is yes that is basically the expectation the by the end of this month or the beginning of next month in fact we will essentially have the new ui and reporting uh, in there Steve, the place to view trending at a patch level is there in the new UI. It is not in there in the current UI. So as part of the new UI, we have basically put the patch trending. And basically for each remediation, also basically the uh, graph that you had asked for uh, previously is also in place. So Simon, if you remember, again, as we said, we have already tried to become a PCI compliant ASP. The problem is that they will not certify a tool. They will only certify a vendor who is basically performing the services. So that's the reason why we basically are looking at it. Uh, Jeff, what sources are you using for the CVs in the red banner that are actively exploited? The red banner basically is coming from threat intel that comes from multiple sources to us. and um, uh, some of them basically uh, are uh, CrowdStrike, then basically um, some of the other threat Intel website with, that we are pulling from RSS feeds. And so we pull all of that and then curate the feed and then we basically mark out whichever are basically marked out as actively being exploited and basically are uh, critical. So. Um, for example, the recent one which essentially was there was paper cut. So paper cut essentially was being actively exploited and basically so then it essentially made it to the red banner. Okay, so just continuing on basically with other features. Ed, yeah, we will basically get... Mm -hmm. Uh, where we, we can basically get uh, all the data. Anything that you see in cyber CNS will be accessible to the API side. So um, some of the other updates, basically, uh, while we talked about attack surface, uh, this basically in standard reports, we now have uh, all the reports, basically a bunch of reports which are available at a global level. So this was again, basically in response to uh, some of the uh, requests that came down here. So we have uh, all of these uh, active directory reports, agents report, compliance summary report, uh, remediation summaries, and all of that stuff at a global level so that 
as you as an MSP or MSSP who's managing the entire thing can essentially use these reports to plan out what you want to do across clients. So um, this basically is kind of uh, this thing. And then we have uh, the jobs. One of the things that was asked for is basically a filtering based on uh, the different statuses. And so essentially now we have essentially a status-based filter which is available there. And then uh, we have the complete agent-based report, which is across multiple companies that you can download. Um, the next one is basically we have support for Citrix Zen Center, um, which basically was not there earlier. So we've added support for Citrix Zen Center into the product. Um, and then we have uh, printer assets, which are basically there in the new asset probe. So we have separate uh, printer asset uh, uh, report. Uh, we also basically in the remediation plan report, there was a request that instead of just the asset name, we need the IP also, and this has also been added. Um, we basically have new blocks in the uh, report builder. Um, of course, the new report builder will basically kind of uh, uh, will carry over all of these blocks, which is basically the AD login, successful logins and AD login failures under active directory in uh, the report builder. Um, and then basically there are new events, which essentially some folks asked for new insecure open port, which is discovered in any of the internal machines, um, which is basically not part of the external scan also basically needs to be discovered. So that also has been added. So all of these basically were added you know, uh, last week. So we continue to kind of evolve the product and basically move it forward. And I'm hoping to very quickly show you the new UI and that uh, whole uh, system. Uh, there's a lot of work that's being done by the team to basically make sure that that get that happens and uh, we'll get back to you shortly with uh, that data uh, very soon so that is uh, what we've been working on so i will basically now stop sharing and then i will basically answer any questions that are out there in the reference for to controls for uh, uh, CIS, is there a way to program in IG1, IG2, and IG3? The answer is yes, we already have. Like if you go to the um, a CIS, you can essentially see the three groups and you will essentially see which, uh, which of the things are compliant for which group and that entire thing is already there in the UI. So um, Adam, my suggestion is like, if you can get in touch with Rishali, we'll basically kind of, uh, um, go over it and basically you if you have any feedback on that we're happy to take care of it um any updates on the patching tool evolution winget for example the answer is that we are basically uh, in the new version we'll be integrating with three patching tools one is winget um, and basically one more is the, the existing chocolatey and we're also basically uh, integrating with the uh, the native windows wsus so we will be uh, uh, getting that plus we are also basically working actively on the Mac OS and Linux patching. So these are essentially the five tenets that we're working on. So you will see an upgrade in the when you get the new UI where you can essentially choose which engine you want to use for uh, a specific customer. Okay. Uh, Simon, thanks. We'll essentially take a look at this. Uh, we in fact took this and we actually kind of enlisted and went and basically kind of tried to pay for this. And that's when we essentially got rejected by the lab. So because that was essentially the problem. So um, we'll basically try this again. Absolutely. Is there an MSP style vulnerability view and then push fix plan? Uh, this is essentially your global uh, remediation plan, which essentially shows you all of the things that you can remediate. And um, essentially over there, right over there, you essentially have the ability to click a patch button if you want to patch it. Um, and we will essentially do this. Adam, uh, what I would suggest is that um, let me get you in touch with uh, Ryan or Julio from my team in the US. They can absolutely do a, a session with you and then walk you through the entire software. And then we can give you the list of videos. We are happy to essentially kind of uh, get you to have this, this thing. Can you push to all clients at once? Yes, you can push to all clients at once, Sean. So that basically facility is available. Um, we'll just create a video and basically send it out to you, Sean. Okay. 
Is there a beta access to the attack surface tool that we could request uh, for testing? For example, we can run against our own domains. Yes, Dennis. So we will be releasing a, data, a beta shortly. Um, I just wanted to be kind of lay it out today so that everybody has a look at it and knows what is coming. So that uh, in case you have any feedback, please send us the feedback. But we will basically make sure that a beta version of it is basically made available probably by early or mid next week, we will basically make it available so that everybody can try to run it on their domains and basically see the results and uh, uh, evaluate how good it is. Perfect. I think we've covered all the questions. Uh, um, is there, so Srikant, Peter, anybody else has anything to, talk about you yes this is basically a high priority feature that basically my team nickel is working on so the ability to create uh, tickets based on EPS score so we will be essentially releasing it um, probably in the second week of May you will see basically the ability to create tickets based on EPS score so based on the buckets that we have created you can essentially say that if the EPS score is between this and this, I want to basically kind of get a ticket for it and it should go to this service. Board. Yeah, so, um, Sean, we are SCAP compliant, uh, vulnerability scanning tool. Uh, ETA for Autotask support, Tim, what part of Autotask support? Because we already have uh, this thing. Uh, we already have, uh, have Autotask support. Uh, maybe I was confused. I thought you only had... Um... No, we have complete Autotask support today. Sean, I'll send you the documentation. And then, uh, uh, Bridges, on the Citrix workspace, uh, yes, basically, we will be adding Citrix workspace on the patching. I will basically put it on the list. In case there is any uh, thing that is missed, we'll basically kind of get back to you. But I think uh, Citrix workspace basically was something that we already had on our roadmap. Simon, are there plans for Probe to push out lightweight agents? Yes, with the new agent, we will be pushing it out, uh, Simon. So you will have the option basically when installing, saying that uh, install lightweight agents on hosts that are Windows, Macs, or Mac or Linux. And you can choose basically whether um, uh, you can, and then essentially it'll automatically install them over there and then leave them out over there. So I think we are pretty much covered on all the questions. So speak on Peter, anything else? No, so, uh, you know, thanks everyone. Uh, we will be back with more updates uh, for the following week. And um, if, if you have any questions, you know how to reach us, uh, happy to get those answered. Thank you. All right, so we can give everybody back 25 minutes. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, guys.